Yes, guys, welcome back to Cosi's Arsenal Podcast. Welcome back to brand new video. We are diving into the player ratings. Arsenal 3, Bodo Glint nil. We're going to mark out each, every player's performance out of 10. I thought the boys played really well. Uh, we controlled the game very well, especially in the first half. Second half, it was a little bit disappointing, but of course, we can take the whole result as a positive. So in the comment section, mark every player out of 10. Hit the like button for me as well. Kindly, let's get this one to 300 likes just because we got 3 nil a victory now matana number one in goal i thought it was solid by the way matana today um he made a very very spectacular save uh to keep the game two nil was it two nil in the first half yeah to keep it at two nil he made a very very spectacular uh, spectacular save he goes down very well uh and i thought his reflexes were tested today and it wasn't that bad the big question with matana is can he keep on improving can he keep on getting better we have not seen the best of him we have we have not seen him uh as, you know tested as a goalkeeper but there is no doubt when Mikel Arteta edu combined to bring in a player there is something special about him his ball playing abilities are, are, are in no doubt he's a very good ball player uh as a goalkeeper one of the few qualities you need to play in this you know in this arsenal side right now as a goalkeeper you must be able to be uh put under pressure number one but then you have to be able to play out from the back very very well so i'll give him an eight out of ten i don't think he had any glitches in his game just like the Zur fc zurich game i thought there were a few glitches in that one but today confident you could see him he was uh, whenever he was called into action um he actually came around so eight out of ten good performance i hope he can you know play against psv because that is the real game that uh, against psv for him in his career at arsenal that is going to be the real deal can he stop the likes of cody gapo uh, from finding the back of the net? but today eight out of ten his passing was good his serves as well i think one or two serves um in the game really really good very good and another clean shed uh takira tomiyasu eight out of ten now i don't have a problem with takira tomiyasu i've never had a problem with this guy the only thing is that ben white is a 50 million pound center uh, you know signing so mikelata has to start ben white over takira tomiyasu but he's so so solid whenever he's playing at right back he's playing in center back um you just have that kind of security that us are not going to concede any silly goals in terms of winning the ball back in terms of progressing as well i think that is the only aspect is better than ben white eyed again we saw it yesterday you know, we, we saw it today um evening he allows uh the team go in front he allows us to you know create those attacks because he's a natural right back uh, he's a natural you know fullback it's not like ben white now, i'm not trying to attack ben white here ben white very good guy very very good player for me uh but takira tomiyasu eight out of ten good performance i want to see more of him this season i want to see those crosses i want to see those overlapping runs i want to see those um you know those runs into the final uh, in, into the final third of the opponent more from my right back and uh, Takeru Tomiyasu gives that, you know, gives us that, gives us that very, very well. Number three is Kieran Tierney. Now, Kieran Tierney, very essential in this game. I, actually, I think he, he has had two very good performances in the Europa League now. The first one, I guess, FC Zurich. Of course, Zurich didn't have any real quality, to be honest. Um, and I, will, I, I won't really say, I won't pra praise Arsenal players so much. But in this game... We are playing a Bodo Glint uh, side that showed some elements of quality. They controlled the game up to 51% uh, of the ball. And they recorded over 488 touches in this game. So you can see there was some real quality uh, in this Bodo Glint side. And truth be told, I think Carantini was up to the task today. Especially offensively. The wonder strike that leads to the first goal uh, is, is a beauty. It's an absolute beauty. I think it's just unlucky that that, that one doesn't get into um, the back of the net. Most of those ones, if it is Cancelo that strikes it, um, if it is Alfonso Davis that strikes it, at times it gets to the back of the net. I think with Kieran TNA, uh, many people are going to ask me, how, 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 how are you rating him? This season, not very much. But in this game, 9 out of 10. Super performance. So... He has to learn that new role of playing as an inverted fullback. He has to learn that new, new role of, you know, always being on the run, always joining up with the midfield. You know, he needs to have more quality to his game uh, as, a, as now, as actually, as a midfielder. Not only as a fullback, not only as a left back, but he has to play uh, many minutes as a midfielder in the new system that, uh, that Mikelat has created. So, 9 out of 10 coming forward he had a few shots on goal by the way uh had a few chances created um in the game you can see the life 
uh, with him combining with Gabriel Martinelli, the life is there. Uh, they are very, very lively. I think they, create, they created a lot of problems for Bodo Glint uh, on that hand side, on that left hand side. So um, again, I want to see him in the next game against Bodo away from home in Norway. I want to see him against PSV. I want to see him um, against uh, uh, you know FC Zurich. I want to see him see him in every game in the Europa League until we win it. There is no reason to drop him. He's good. It's just that Alexander Zichenko starts in the Premier League and Kerantian should play in every other competition for Arsenal uh, outside the Premier League. So 9 out of 10, I was really convinced. Another 9 out of 10 I've awarded is Rob Holding. The goal is good, right? I mean, you expect your defenders to be heading the ball, but most of us expected if it was going to be a header from a centre-back, it was going to be the other guy, Gabriel Magales. Pretty much silent, Gabriel. Today we'll talk about him. But Rob Holding stole the show defensively. He stole the show. I saw him, you know, battle. Uh, he was winning his area dwells. He was winning his ground dwells. Um, he was covering a lot of uh, a lot of ground as well, joining the midfield, helping us play that high line. You know, allowing us to have the overloads in midfield. And whenever we needed a, a, an extra body in the penalty area, the guy was there. Look, I've talked about the most improved player under Mikel Arteta. And that is Granny Jacker, without a doubt. But Rob Holding needs a mention. R Rob Holding needs to be talked about. Um, he's becoming better and better. Now, yes, it did cost us the North London derby. Um, uh, probably we were, we, were, we were not up to the task, really. But he cost us the game by getting a red card last season. But you feel the standards have been raised a little bit. It's either this whole team, uh, this whole Arsenal team has raised their standards. So players like Rob Holding have actually come along. Oh, Mikel has raised the standards of every player at this side, um, which I cannot actually disagree against. So I'm going to go with a 9 out of 10 for Rob Holding. Gabriel Magales, I'm not wasting time. 8 out of 10, pretty solid performance. He needs to be rotated, guys. He needs to be rotated. He cannot play, uh, you know, this many minutes. Actually, I, I, what I don't understand with Mikel is... We have so many right-sided uh, right, uh, right, uh, right, uh, right centre-backs... Saliba, Rob Holding, and Ben White. And he keeps on rotating them, but he never rotates Gabriel Magales. Against Zurich, for me, Gabriel Magales doesn't play that game. Against uh, this uh, Bodo Glint, again, he shouldn't play in this game. Remember the, the, the predicted lineup I went with? I said Rob Holding um, or Ben White alongside Takeru Tomiyasu. That's what I said, right? Because you have cover for Ben at right back, you have, you, you have cover for Saliba. At right, uh, at right, uh, at right centre back, and then you have cover for Rob Holding at right centre back as well. So for me, uh, Gabriel Magales is the one that needs to be rotated more because if he, if if he picks up an injury, our uh, our you know defensive line goes bizarre. We are in a predicament if he picks up an injury. But good performance, strong. You can see the leadership in him. You can see the maturity. You can see that he's the more informed centre back. Um, and he did he did less. But he did more. So, uh, look, I don't want to become this kind of, uh, you know, uh, philosophy guy. When you do less, you're doing more. But Gabriel Magales is becoming my, you know, my big, big centre-back. Albert Sambi Lakonga, we are dropping 7 out of 10. Now, Lakonga has one problem. And it is his inconsistencies uh, and uh, performance fluctuations mid-game. I don't understand why he, you know, he keeps on doing that. In the first half, very good. He was picking up the ball in deeper areas, advancing it very well, passing the ball um, around. The distribution was good as well. Uh, and I thought there were a few moments where he should have pulled the trigger as well. In the second half, Bodo Clint ran riot. The midfield was clearly empty. I, 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 uh, the only names I was l watching and listening to uh, on my screen, it was Saltness and you know, Vettlesen. Lokonga, where was he? In the second half. And, and he needs to work on this. We've always talked about him uh, as one of those young players that have a lot um, to learn and they have a lot, you know, a, a lot to uh, cover until they reach their ceiling. But in my opinion, one of the things he has to work on is consistency within games. You cannot have a very good first half and then you, you, you gift, uh, the, you know, the midfield to your opponents in the second half. So 7 out of 10, he needs to work on that. Not a bad player at all. I mean, I, mean, I don't know many people would say, uh, cause he's not even a good player or that. No. He's a very good player. He's a very, he's a gem uh, of a talent. Actually, um, playing at Arsenal for the past two seasons, 
I look at Edward Kamavinga. I look at Albert Samilokonga. I look at Jude Bellingham. Now, I'm not, I'm not trying to compare the three. I'm saying if Lokonga raises his level, he will be able to have his convers his name in the conversation with the same of the uh, with the same uh, in, in the same conversations with the names of these boys. Lokonga, um, Kamavinga, Bellingham. Pedri, Gavi, and those boys. Because they're in the same age bracket. And you look at the responsibility and the trust Mikelata is putting in this guy. Um, if he doesn't use that opportunity, he's going to have himself to blame. Now, uh, let's move on to Granny Jaka. 7 out of 10 as well. Now, Jaka played very, very well. I'm just going to give him a 7. Just, just a 7. Uh, no reasons. No reasons. He didn't play poorly. Uh, he had a handball. He had a hard point in the middle of the back. It's, it's crazy, isn't it? Uh, he was captain in this game uh, once again. Uh, and you can see, whenever he's in the pitch, there is control. The leadership is guaranteed. Um, Arsenal pressing high. Arsenal pressing the opponent against the, game, uh, the gas pedal. We are creating big chances. We are becoming ruthless and dangerous. He's, um, I, I, don't, I didn't see him more advanced today. But let's talk about the free kick he, was, he nearly scored. That was a cracker. That was a real, real cracker. And we know he's got the ability in that range. He's got that sort of uh, ability, uh, you know, from that distance. When you set him up, he's going to release uh, the Kraken. Overall, his game has improved. And with opponents like Bodo Glint, I don't think, um, you know, he, he sees his name on the team sheet. And he's like, I'm lucky to be playing every game for Mikel Arteta and Arsenal. Otherwise, um, things would have been very different. I would be in Italy right now uh, eating these unknown foods from Rome. But right now, he has the ability to be a proud Arsenal captain. And I'm so glad for him. So, 7 out of 10, just because the midfield was dominated in the second half. Just that. No no other reasons. Yeah. Because uh, he doesn't like Granny Jacker. Not, not that. Yeah, not that. Um, I'm just giving him that and we are moving on no debates now man of the match fabio viera for me 10 out of 10 the only 10 i've given uh in this game fabio viera almost everywhere in this game and the, uh, that is the kind of performance i was waiting for uh to announce that fabio viera has finally arrived and as, as an arsenal player now michael talked about his uh hindrances didn't have a good preseason. Didn't have preseason at all. I'm sorry. He didn't have preseason at all. And in the first five games of the campaign, he actually didn't play. So it's gonna take some time for him to create these passing patterns, to create these combinations with um, players like Saka, Marquinhos, uh, you know, Edin Ketia, Gabriel Martinelli, and the rest. So he's not been part of this group. And we, you look at the strength uh, of this Arsenal side. One of them is. We've, we, we've been together as a side, so we know each other. You look at Thomas Partey releasing that ball. The, the clear example is Martin Odegaard's pass uh, that um, goes to the wasteful feet of, 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 of Edin Ketia. That is the clear example. Odegaard knows when to play the ball, and he, you know, he has the ability to anticipate either Gabriel Jesus is going to run onto that ball, or Edin Ketia is going to run onto that ball. Now, Fabio Vieira doesn't have that right now. He doesn't have those connections. He has, he has not built those combinations, connections, that understanding with the rest of the players. But that should not fool you. That should not disappoint you. This guy is special. This boy is... Um, the raw material in which this, you know, his talent was made um, is absolutely out of this world. He's very, very good. And we saw it today. So I've given him a 10 out of 10. He scored... He created an assist. And those are the two most important attributes of his game. He will score goals for Arsenal. He will create, ch you know, create chances for Arsenal. He has more goals than Ronaldo in the Europa League. He has more goals than Ronaldo overall this season. And he has not actually played so many games. He has not started so many games as well, just like Ronaldo. So, um, Vieira, 10 out of 10. Do you agree? Let me know in the comment section. Edin Ketia, 8 out of 10. How did he miss that second half chance? How did he miss that? Odegaard plays the ball clearly in the path of Edin Ketia. You are a striker. You're looking to impress. You're looking to impress the manager. And you release that. You release such a strike. That is embarrassing. He should be ashamed. He definitely um, should be ashamed of himself. You cannot become a great striker by, by only being a tapping tap manager. No. You must have these one-on-ones with goalkeepers. Uh, and you must finish them off. 
very well. Um, so Edin Ketia, I'm, I'm disappointed with that. But the overall game of this boy has actually become a better performance to look at. His, the overall game of Edin Ketia is so, so good. He never, he literally never becomes offside, number one. But it's not even about not becoming offside. It's about him positioning himself very well. I said this in the match reaction. His positioning is better than that of Gabriel Jesus. His positioning is so, so good. He, you know, he has that ability to anticipate where the ball is going to, you know, land from a cross, from a rebound. And then his reaction is superb. I've seen him play in a couple of games where, um, you know, he got, just gets the rebound. His reaction is absolutely superb. Whenever there is any kind of ricocheting in the penalty area, Edin Ketia is, you know, within a flash. He's on the ball. So 8 out of 10 would have given him a 9 if he had scored that chance. Because for me, as a striker, you can't get such a chance and then blow the ball over the bar. Uh, uh, no, no, no. That is unacceptable. Now, 10, Makinos. Makinos, I'll give him a 7. Um, 7 today was the average mark. So I'll give him a 7. Quite average. Now, I don't want us to be carried away about these young talents. I don't want us to press a lot of pressure onto the shoulders of Marquinhos, uh, of, of uh, you know, Miguel Aziz, Charlie Patino. I know many Arsenal fans who are really trying to make sure that these boys become prime Ronaldo at their age. You need to give them the time. So Marquinhos today, basic football. And for me, as, a, as long as a footballer can do the basics right, right? If you're not on your best game, do the basics right. Stop, you know, you know control the ball pass it around, play very well, create those passing patterns very well. Uh, you can work the channels if you get the chance. If you don't get the chance, uh, stay put, wait for your chance. Um, and that is what you know, Marquinhos did. And you could see, whenever he got the ball, he was trying to cut inside. Uh, he wanted to take a shot in the, you know, in the first half. He wanted to take a shot inside the box and out of the box in the first half. So you can see he's a player that is enthusiastic. He's a player that is really uncomfortable if something is not happening. So 7 out of 10. But that is purely because he was basic. And lastly, Gabriel Martinelli, 8 out of 10. So, Martinelli, I, I don't know. There is something about him that I like. He needs to, uh, he needs to be rotated more as well. There is something I, about him that I, I, I really like a lot. And it is his ability to impact games. It is his ability to, uh, you know, create a difference in games. Today... Not any different. Uh, uh, not any different. Eight out of ten. Um, Mikel Arteta, ten out of ten. Yeah, ten out of ten. Uh, good, good game management. Good rotation. I mean, as a manager, your biggest task in this month, every manager, is can you win games? Can you pick up the most important points? Can you keep? Can you be consistent? And can you, uh, you know, run away from injuries? as much as I, as much as you can so i thought um you know michael right now he's done so far so well 10 out of 10. martin Odegaard, six out of ten and when they came on the game didn't change that much gabriel is created an assist so that is a seven out of ten um he comes on creates an assist the skills is good the skills are good yeah he beats he beats almost three uh, uh bodoglin defenders on the line to create that assist for uh fabio Vieira. man of the match Fabio Vieira. No, no question about that. See you soon. We'll be talking about the six things we learned. I think we'll have a match, um, a live reaction in the, um, uh, in the morning. Yeah. And then we'll jump onto the content for the Liverpool game. You can see, no time to rest. Reward my hard work with a like. I'll see you soon.